Nice. Oops. Yeah, sure. Let's go. Moms everywhere are finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. <sighs> Works every time. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. This week with Sheriff Dave Phelan, a weekly program here on LSN Television, our cable affiliate in Lancaster. Also carried on a number of our radio uh, affiliates throughout Central Ohio. And do appreciate you, the viewers and listeners, that join us each and every week. And I would be remiss if I didn't thank the students and the staff at Fairfield Christian Academy who produce and put this program together each and every week and certainly appreciate all of you that join us. We have guests from within the Fairfield County Sheriff's Office and guests from throughout the county and beyond this week. Uh, Chief Mike Tussey, good to see you, Mike. Good to see you, Sheriff. And Chief of uh, Baltimore. And uh, you you visited us a, a few times, I think. Yes, I have. Yes, yeah, I have. Yeah. So uh, just a, a little bit to kind of recap a little bit about your background. Well, uh, I actually retired from the Westerville Division of Police, um, where I, one of my last assignments was I was in charge of all the investigations up there, internet, things along that line, and uh, also worked in their uh, section for uh, the school resource officers, DARE, working heavily with the schools. Mm -hmm. uh, retired, and uh, let's see, it's going to be six years in May. Hard I've to believe. been the chief down at, uh, at Baltimore. Yeah, yeah, lots, of, and you've made a lot of changes uh, in Baltimore, and uh, I've heard nothing but good stuff. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. So what are some of the things you've, you've implemented in the last six years? Well, one of the things we did, obviously, uh, we, we wanted to up the presence, the police presence, and, and some of the things seem small, but there was reasoning behind it. For an example, uh, we reconfigured the way our cars look. Uh, they were kind of nondescript, and we wanted something that really stood out. No matter where you were, if you saw it, you knew that there was a police presence there. So that was one of the things we did. We uh, really upped the training that the officers receive. Uh, we, uh, as you know, the state has minimum standards, but we thought that it was really important to get beyond that. Uh, working in conjunction with you and your office and uh, Pickerington uh, Police Department and the Lancaster Police Department, we were able to also implement uh, purchase of, or I should say, a grant involving some equipment that's now being used and utilized by all those agencies for internet crimes and cell phone crimes, which are a huge problem right now. And uh, recently, uh, we talk about school, school security, and I guess even before we get onto that subject, you know, the tragedy we've seen uh, with the Boston Marathon oh, recently. Um, and I guess the only surprise to me is after 9-11, they said they predicted something was going to happen in short order. I think uh, I was surprised in, in some ways it's taken so long. Well, unfortunately, I, I, I agree 100 percent, and I think that's that's a huge testament to the uh, constant daily vigilance of the law enforcement community, uh, the first responders, and to a great extent the, the the citizens every day out there who are now better educated to look for unusual packages or strange activities or something that doesn't look like it fits in and. Uh, certainly we've had a lot of attempts, uh, you know, some of the more famous, obviously the attempted shoe bomber and things along that line, but in many cases, because somebody chose to pick up a phone and make a phone call, many lives were saved. Yeah, we, although, you know, uh, this is tragi tragic, there certainly has, and I think about New York uh, and Times Square, I think of a, a number of things uh, that through a lot of good intelligence, uh, a lot of good information, uh, that we've been able to stop those kind of things. And the reality is, and I, I like to remind people this, 
even when you have the problems we have with, with school tragedies, uh, when you have mar something at the Boston Marathon, when you have a movie theater, the reality is uh, these things are still, uh, there's not very many. And, and then secondly, you know, I tell students and teachers and educators, schools today are still the safest place you can be. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so it's, the chances are very remote that it's going to hit home. But I think uh, what we saw in Boston speaks volumes about uh, how an agency that's prepared and able to deal with that, how, how they came together. And everything I've heard so far, is, uh, I haven't heard one criticism. It sounds like law enforcement, fire service, um, the volunteers, the hospital, the medical people came together and, and prevented a, a larger number of loss of life. Oh, absolutely. And, and that's, uh, again, one of the things that uh, I find so amazing is, you know, you have different agencies, different, uh, you know, subgroups, you know, federal government, state government, local, whatever it may be. And all of us have our own missions a little different, no matter what that may be. But when you have a major event like this, uh, everyone does really step up and say, what can we do to help? What do you need from us? Uh, you know, I, I recall the, you know, the events on 9-11 where uh, the number of, uh, of uh, first responders from the Central Ohio area that went to uh, New York City to help was, was just unbelievable and the outpouring of support. And you're seeing that now with this also. And in a free society, I think there are certainly limitations as long as we're going to be free. I don't know that there's anything that, that could have been done to increase the security level at the Boston Marathon or a lot of different things without actually infringing on, on the rights that we've come to sh cherish as Americans. I mean, you have a 26-mile a line of, of runners to think that you could ever make any area, any shopping mall, any place completely secure in a system where we have these freedoms is not realistic. No, it's not. And, and what it does for us and law enforcement is that I think it, we've realized that we can't do this alone. And we've realized now that we do need uh, to really reach out to the public. We need to educate. Uh, I know you are and, and, and I am a very strong uh, supporter of making sure that education is a component of enforcement. And with that, I think a lot of the things that we're seeing in the communities uh, have helped us to be safe. Right, absolutely. You you um, have been working with uh, with the schools there in in, in Baltimore, mm -hmm. and uh, you've started a, an initiative there to help improve the security within uh, within the school system. Uh, it's gotten some national attention. So, so tell us a little bit about that, how that works. Well, we're Liberty Union Thurston Schools. We're, we're uh, very fortunate to have them, uh, and they're all the schools are inside of Baltimore. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, responsibility for all those. And we're very fortunate that we have a DARE and a school resource officer as a part of our, uh, our components so that he works with the schools. And one of the things we realize is you can't be, you know, an officer cannot be in three schools at the same time, and there's times you're called away. So we begin to work hand in hand with the school's IT person and we're able to develop a program where on board in each cruiser we have a computer as most agencies do now and we have a direct link with all of the cameras that are in the schools. And what that does for us is let's say for example I'm tied up at the high school for some reason, uh, maybe outside uh, monitoring something, whatever. When I know, and we have a list, of, so I know when the buses are coming at the elementary school, I can open my computer, bring up that screen, and in real time, I can watch those buses coming in, loading, unloading. I can switch, watch the office, the entryways. If someone calls, for example, and says, hey, you know, there's a car sitting out here, and, and we don't know who the car belongs to, and it seems kind of suspicious, we can bring those cameras up and view that. And it gives us the uh, availability to basically have a virtual police officer in the schools at all times. Boy, great technology. In fact, this morning I went to a meeting with the school superintendents throughout Fairfield County and we heard a presentation from a, a gentleman who's talking about trying to bring that type of technology to all the schools. And it's, it's, it's very inexpensive. Um, part of that would be there would be pictures taken of each classroom, of the hallway, of the outside of the building, of the roof. And then the other part component would be, like you said, the camera set up in the hallway, the gymnasium, the cafeteria. So from our communication uh, from the dispatching center, uh, if there's some kind of an emergency, we would be able to, 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 to go ahead and let people know 
the first responders what's going on. And uh, even if that information could be uh, in the cruisers, on the computer. So, so it sounds like you're a step ahead on this. In fact, what, what you were telling me before airtime, there's only one other agency we were, uh, in the United States? We were contacted by, uh, well, local media has, has been, had some interest in this, and then we were contacted by uh, CNN. And uh, the reporter who was researching this told us that we were only one of two agencies that they had located that had the technology actually up and running in this manner, where it's in real time. Okay, so outstanding. So you've got to be pretty, pretty thrilled. I think it speaks volumes about the school system, Paul Matthews, and also about uh, you as the chief in the Baltimore Police Department. That's pretty, that's pretty nice. Well, thank you. I, I, uh, you know, I want to give all the credit back to our school resource officer, Jason Hargett, who sure. Good guy. absolutely has put in hundreds of hours researching this. And obviously, we kind of operate on a shoestring. And, and one of the things that we had to look at was cost. How do we factor this in? And originally, we were told this was going to cost $50,000, then it was $10,000. And when he was finished with this program, it cost us $297 to implement. So uh, yeah, we're real, we're real fortunate to have him there. And, and our IT uh, uh, counterpart at the schools, and Paul Matthews in particular, have just been wonderful working with him. I'll tell you my CNN story. Um, this is kind of funny, and you never know what's going to be what's going to make the news and what's not going to make the news. But a number of years ago, in the sheriff's office, we when we were having the budgetary issues, we went ahead and some of the like in Bremen, we thought if we had a golf cart that because of the size of Bremen we could get around, so we we would have a deputy in a golf cart instead of a cruiser. A lot of the times, of course, the cruiser would be there in case mm -hmm. there was a big emergency. But by and large. And so, so that got a lot of notoriety, but I was actually on vacation one year. I think we were in the Carolinas, and I got a call from, uh, from CNN, and they said, we would like to talk to you about the golf cart. And, uh, and I said, well, that, you know, okay. And they said, well, if you'll go to our affiliate, and I believe it might have been in Charlotte or somebody, if you'll go to our affiliate there, uh, we'll go ahead and do the interview, and we'll kind of, and, and so, of course, I've got, I, I'm, I don't have any good clothes. I go and buy a, a white shirt and a, a, and a tie and, and, and go, and um, it, was, it was pretty neat. It was just kind of like we are here, but they had one cameraman, and it, it was fed into New York, and then it was on a split screen where we actually did an interview with the CNN that went out to, to millions of people. But uh, I've been often surprised over the years how, how some stories uh, will make big news and other stories that are notable. And yours is notable, and I think it, it deserves the recognition it's getting. But there are other stories that I'm thinking, well, this wouldn't really be newsworthy, but somebody had got wind of it and it became a big story. As a friend of mine who works in the media says, sometimes we have slow news days. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been one of the slow, <laughs> slow, slow news days. So. Um, with with the with the Baltimore Police Department and uh, things going on there, uh, anything exciting coming up? You'll be having some parades coming up and things coming up well, this summer. Well, we certainly had the first weekend in August is the Festival Baltimore Festival Parade, and uh, two years ago we were uh, it was announced that we are now officially the largest parade in Fairfield County, uh, and I know you always participate in that. I always try to be there. Yeah. Always there, and uh, so that's a, a huge undertaking for us. Make sure we've got. You know all the traffic rerouted and, and all that and uh, again a good great example of, of uh, cooperation you know your deputies come up and give us a, a hand with that and they do just a wonderful job so we have that uh, we have that going on um, in two weeks uh, on a Saturday we're going to have a uh, DEA drug drop-off and that's in uh, conjunction with the village pharmacy and the owner uh, the owners Tom and Judy Gasser and we'll have an officer outside the front doors. So anyone that has any uh, narcotics or anything like that, maybe someone's passed away and you're not really sure what to do with those, if you bring those to us, we will uh, bag those all up and the DEA will pick those up and make sure that they're properly disposed of. We would want to urge people, please don't dump anything down your toilets if you live in town because it does have a possibility it can contaminate the water system, so we want to make sure that those are being properly picked. What, what's the date of that again, Chief? That's going to be the 27th. 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 Okay. 27th of April coming up. Mm -hmm. What? Any hours on that, or do you know? Uh, it'll be from uh, 10 till 2. 10 till 2. Okay. And uh, again, uh, we'll be very prominent sitting outside. We'll have a table and we'll have the pickup boxes out there. If people simply want to pull up to the curb, we'll come down, pick it up at the curb, and put it in the box for you so you don't even have to get out of the car. 
We're just about out of time. I'd like to have you back next week, Chief, and I know one of your expertise, areas of expertise is the uh, internet, internet crimes, uh, uh, certainly the sexual predators, and uh, you've been on, talked about that before. It's probably good to revisit that. You know, we haven't talked about it in a year or so, but to kind of talk about how to keep your kids safe, especially in the day, in, in this time when we have all kids on the, on the computer all the time, and Facebook, a lot of different stuff out there. I would be honored to do that. With us uh, this week was uh, Chief Mike Tussey with the Baltimore Police Department, six-year veteran of the Police Department there as chief, and uh, 20, how many years? Uh, 28. 28-year <laughs> uh, law enforcement veteran. That goes a, that's, a, that's a long time. But we do appreciate him and his uh, officers in Baltimore and, and the good job they do there. The clock on the wall says it's time to go. Until next week, same time, same place. If you're out there driving, buckle up. God bless, and we'll see you right here next week. Statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org.